Many thanks for joining now. Our first stop story focuses on a recent attack over the weekend in Kaduna that has left 38 persons dead. Now, the Kaduna state government says the death toll in an attack by suspected bandits in Giwa local government area of the state on Saturday has risen to 38 from 20. Now, the Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Mr. Samuel Aruwa, confirmed the new figure in an update in a statement issued on Sunday in Kaduna. Now, Mr. Aruwa stated that security agencies had uh, confirmed to the Kaduna state government that 38 people were killed across the locations attacked. He also added that, that quote, the 29 of the victims have been identified with nine remaining unidentified as the time of the update of the uh, the bandits also destroyed property worth millions of naira in giwa local government area of the state now we have joining us this morning once again our new central abuja bureau chief and correspondent amadin uyi amadin good to have you once again good morning to you out there well can you confirm to us uh, where exactly these attacks took place in kaduna state Good morning, Olisa. Good morning, Oluchi. Uh, I think I would not like to go by uh, the statement released by Mr. Samuel Arunwa because also the presidency also released their own statement. And Arunwa was talking only about the attacks on Saturday. But the, president, the presidency's statement talked about the attacks that occurred throughout the week. We had about five local governments. The statement of Arunwan talked about the attack only in Giwa local government area. But from the statement released by Mr. Garba Shew on behalf of the president, it was, we observed that uh, attacks, uh, we had attacks uh, in Zango Kataf, we had attacks in Chikung, we had attacks in uh, Giwa, we had attacks in about five local governments. So uh, confirming it is we just have to look at uh, the full week and ask ourselves about these attacks because it was not only on Saturday that the attacks occurred. All right. Now, Amadine, we hear that um, there are security patrol teams currently at the attack area. Some people have come out to say that where were they before this attack? This is, isn't this a little too late, a case of medicine after death? Amadine, are you still there with us? Yeah, come again, please. All right, Amadin, we're looking at the security situation in that local government area because from the information we're getting, um, police security patrols seem to have been there now um, after the attack. And some people are wondering, why now? Why after? What happened? Why were they not there even before this attack started in that area? Uh, see, Oluchi, that is the current security strategy we have, always deploying after such attacks. It's clear that our security uh, strategy is not uh, designed to prevent these attacks. Now, if you uh, remember that even at times when there, there are curfews, especially in Kaduna, when the state government imposes curfew on certain areas, these attacks still go on. Let's not be quick to forget the one that happened in Plateau State. So if you say that security operators have been deployed, to how much extent will they be effective? Because if they have been deployed and they can stop these attacks, well and good, we'll give them a pat on the back. But from history and uh, what has been happening in the past, we've observed that uh, deploying security operators in these troubled uh, areas in the north does not stop attacks on innocent citizens and residents. Mm. Well, Amadine, you talked about that Chikung local government and Zango Katab. These are areas in Kaduna South along that highway and those towns there that it's not the first time we've seen this. Now, from what you're getting, uh, Mr. Arouan quoted about 29 victims. But what you're getting in Abuja, how many more can you update us in terms of victims so far throughout the week from how the attack started? Now, if you understand the nature of this attack, the presidency did not give figures because we like to go by their figures. But if you follow uh, the figures from residents, uh, uh, we would not like to stand on those figures because sometimes they might be inflated. But as the days go by, uh, more dead bodies are found in the bush because when these terrorists, mind you, I said terrorists, not bandits, because if you uh, go back to 2014 when uh, Boko Haram started attacking communities, it was the same strategy. It was the same modus operandi. So I don't understand why now it is happening in Kaduna. The, 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 the level of the perpetrators are now changed from terrorists to bandits. But let's leave that aside. If you go by, you spot that for the next couple of days, because 
when these attacks occur, people run into the bush, some are injured, and over in the next couple of days, more figures and more figures. Remember that the Cardinal State Government came and said they are now 38. Because initially they said they were 20. But as time goes by, more and more dead bodies are found and their identity is locked. So for now, we cannot ascertain to tell you that it is only 38 that died. But we know in the course of the week, if you com combine all the attacks that have happened in the Kaduna area, I'm sure we are talking uh, well over 50 people that have been killed in cold blood. In cold blood. It's not the first time, but Nigerians are getting used to this kind of attacks. All right. Now, Ahmedin, looking at the situation out there, um, can you tell us if anybody has come out to claim responsibility for these attacks in, um, in that region? Uh, the, the way the attacks happen, usually in the northwest, uh, in the northeast, we, everybody knows who, the people responsible for these attacks. They don't need to come out and claim responsibilities. For us, we believe they are, they are terrorists who are trying to look for a different base. Remember that the heat has been on in the northeast. So uh, naturally, they have to look for a different base to operate. And like the former chief of army staff, the former chief of defense staff said, that we have a lot of ungoverned spaces. And in a lot of these areas, you see ungoverned spaces, citizens are left as sitting dogs without any form of protection. So naturally, those are attractive areas for them to hibernate. But we are hoping that, uh, just like a court declared them terrorists, we are hoping that the federal government will put the same pressure in the Northeast on these so-called terrorists who have migrated to the Northwest area of the country. Mm. Well. I'm adding, even the dogs this morning uh, around you are not happy about the situation. But uh, we thank you so much for the updates and continue to follow the story out there. Sad, sad attack in the week uh, out there in Kaduna. But thank you very much once again, our Abuja correspondent and Bureau Chief Amadine Uyi for coming on Breakfast Central. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Oluchi.